So we put the top back up on top of the T-top and centered it and then clamped it down and I made this little marking gauge. It's just uh, there's a one inch difference between the short end and the long end of this thing. So I'm marking the center of the tube so I can drill for all the bolt holes, drill the bolt holes for the bolts. Well, I wasn't expecting this. The hot glue came off really easily and the blue tape is giving me a hard time. Go figure. So I drilled holes six inches apart across the front and the back and eight inches apart down the long sides. Um, and then I used a chamfer bit to kind of clean up the top and bottom edges of the holes so they wouldn't be have those whiskers because this fiberglass and doesn't drill very well. And I put a coat of epoxy paint which um, cures that polyester resin stickiness and I sanded it down good so now I'm putting the second coat of epoxy paint. And it's real heavy body it's filling the the weave from the um, fiberglass cloth and just making it it's going to make it a lot easier to clean the top because it's just making it smoother so second coat of epoxy looking much better i'll give it a light sanding and then i'm going to spray it with the carpet which i painted the boat with but i'm going to use the ugly tan color because i have a gallon of it left untouched and it doesn't show so we'll use the tan the bright white is better for sun but this is epoxy it doesn't hold up well to uh, uv rays it'll get all chalky and yucky so need to paint it the best uh 200 bucks i've ever spent in my life was getting two more gallons and covering up this ugly beige color i don't know what i was thinking when i painted the boot this color I've given the bottom side of the top a good going over with 150 grit and the random orbital. Um, paying special attention to the edges because that's people are going to reach up and grab that. That's what you're going to see. Um, for the most part, it was very smooth. It didn't need anything uh, specifically. I'm just kind of trying to etch the surface a little bit so the paint will stick. And I have some of the epoxy primer that I purchased for the T-top. And I'm going to give it a coat of that. Um, as soon as I get it all cleaned up. Something pleasurable about covering up um, work with fresh, clean, shiny paint. Okay, drilling a hole for the new used uh, shifter. I got it as far to the right as I dare. And the hole is not centered on the shifter. The little part that goes through the dash is kind of toward the bottom. So it's a little bit of an educated guess here. Um, I don't want it overhanging the bottom, but I don't want the shifter to hit the top part of the console. So I got it uh, where I think it needs to be, and it was okay. So it was a little too snug here, so we got the pencil grinder out and kind of just made the hole just a little bit bigger until it could slide down and the mounting bolts uh, touch the console. And then I drill them out, and uh, it's done. This thing fits. Seems like there might should be a gasket under it or something. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to find that out because there's really no way to seal it from uh, rainwater dripping down the sides. Step one was to drop this part in the hole and put the three quarter by 20 bolts and tighten them down. Um, there's my practice hole. This is my real hole. Now the next step gave me a little bit of problem because you're supposed to hold that helm pump up and it's pretty heavy and get the four bolts started and they've got a lot of um, um, Loctite on the bolts. I couldn't get them started at the same time holding the pump up so I put some temporary bolts in there that don't have this goop on them and they screwed in real easy so they're holding it in place and now I can get the, the manufacturer's bolts in there and get two in and then take these off and put the other two in tighten them up. Done deal. So that actually took me a little while because this bolt pattern these four bolts they're not in a square they're in a rectangle and bolt patterns always go left right or up down right wrong this one goes cattywampus but once I figured that out that went on with no problem now this tilt mechanism uh, look at that slides right on there two screws um, let's get those tightened down 
drop on a plastic trim piece and a rubber boot, which I'm not going to fasten either one of those because I still want to buff this paint. And a wheel. And a wheel. Hey, buddy. And it tilts up. And it tilts down. I can't tilt all the way up because it hits. And then a little final quality control. Make sure everything's okay. I'm going to raise my steering wheel a little bit and tilt it a little more. Because one, it could just be higher. And two, I don't want it tilting into the upper part of the um, console. Because if there's a... a I don't know, a chart plotter up there or something, and somebody slams it, I guess they could actually break it. So, this is the base. I drew a circle a quarter inch bigger than the base, and I'm going to um, rip the sides right to this circle, and then I'm going to rip it on the table saw at a, at a bevel. Because I want this thing to sit more like this. Um, I'd rather be using a plastic like a starboard or something, but I don't have it, so I'm using this big piece of yackle, and I'll have to paint it, and then I'll probably always have to paint it because it's wood, but we're going to uh, start trying to get this thing to shape. This is one of those cuts that uh, kind of like you feel like maybe you shouldn't be doing it, but uh, I, don't, I don't know any other way, so I can promise you my two little fingers of my right hand were latched onto that rip fence just in case and you can tell that the woods kind of hard by looking at the smoke coming out this was um, a relatively sharp blade it wasn't that old it just wood so dang hard now if I'd have been smarter I would have drilled the big hole in the middle first and that would have uh, made it easier to rip and easier to drill the hole because I would have been drilling at a right angle so the way it was I had to um, stack both of these blocks together in the drill press to get the hole at 90 degrees and I promise you I didn't try to hold these with my fingers I had it clamped down securely Now hole saws are good because you're only cutting the circumference of the hole so you're not wasting a lot of energy removing the wood from the middle. But they have little bitty teeth and therefore little bitty gullets and therefore there's not much room for the chips to go. So when you're drilling something thick like this they're really not that efficient. You got to keep going up and down. You got to get the chips out of the hole otherwise it just binds up and gets hot. So a little bit frustrating but in order to fit this block I had to take everything back apart so I think with the block in place <clears throat> the combination between pulling it out this way a little bit and leaning it this way a little bit will keep the steering wheel from hitting right here so I got to go make the block round and go sand it pretty and epoxy it and paint it um, I could leave it natural and it would look good for a while but when it comes time to redo it, it is almost impossible to varnish between white and varnish. My, I can't do it. My hands shake too much. So I'm going to paint it. I think it will hold up better. So I drilled my holes. I cut the outside with the bandsaw. I rounded over this corner with the router. And I gave it a rough sanding. I didn't want it too smooth because I want the epoxy to really soak in. And I got a couple of boo-boos that I'm going to... Put some epoxy filler on but first i'm gonna um just seal it up with epoxy let it dry overnight and then tomorrow we'll start trying to make it look pretty so our little spacer i primed it with epoxy just neat epoxy and then i sanded it and then i put some epoxy filler and sanded it and now I put one coat of uh, just black spray paint on it so i cleaned up my ring and i spray painted it black to match the plastic parts of the steering system and I decided I didn't like it so I sanded it back a good bit I'm getting ready to paint it the um, same color as everything else off white
This was a, a fold-down footrest from another boat. Not from mine, but from another one. <clears throat> and it worked pretty good, actually. So basically, this is mounted to the back of the uh, console. And the, when you want a footrest, it folds down. And it's just simple and it works. Um, but I don't like these sharp edges on this aluminum. So I cut out some fiberglass and I'm going to glue them to the face of these things just to give it some more mass. I don't need it stronger, I just don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to glue a piece to each one of these little leaves and then re-drill them. And this is not wide enough for my console, so I'll just put a, a I'm not sure, but probably just a board, just a pretty piece of mahogany or something for the footrest. So. so this is the new footrest and it is laminated um, pieces of teak. It's really strong. Um, but it's thicker than the old aluminum, so it didn't work. So I'm having to cut a, I believe this would be called a rabbit or a dado on each end to make it work correctly with the um, hardware that I have. So because of the shape of this thing, I wasn't really able to clamp this part to the wood um, to make it be still to drill the holes and tap them. So I just marked one. Uh, just marked it with the drill bit and then I took it off the aluminum off and put it in the vise and did a center punch and drilled and tapped that hole and now that I have this bolt it's snugged up so I'm going to drill and tap the other ones in place to make sure that all three will work. So the stainless bolts I have are too long I need to whack off 5 eighths of an inch so I made this little holder it's just a little block of wood with the tapped 1032 now we've got them sticking out five eighths of an inch. I'm gonna trim them here, and I'll just do six of them real quick, and they'll be the same length. And then I'll have to um, sand the ends to make sure the threads aren't boogered up. got this front corner where I cut the rabbit all the way through and that's not gonna look good so I'm plugging it with a little block of wood and when the glue dries I'll be able to cut it down and round that front a little bit try to keep some uh, shin injuries to a minimum so if I mount when I mount this step if a big guy were to step on it you know like a big 200 pounder and I got a lot of guys that friends that are way over 200 pounds Gonna put a tremendous amount of uh, stress on these top bolts, tension and compression on the bottom, and that rear face of my console is single layer. It's not laminated, so <clears throat> I'm gonna cut out these two rectangles as backing plates and put them on the inside of the console to spread that load a little bit from those bolts. So a while back, when somebody woke me to the fact that I should be using a diamond wheel instead of the little abrasive wheels to cut this random fiberglass stuff. I put this wheel on and I've been using it for seven months now and just cut miles of glass with it and abused it and everything else and this is still the first blade and it's still got a lot of diamonds left these little things are pretty amazing Okay, footrest is installed, and it's good, and it's strong. Um, I've got it all dry. I've got the backing plates on the inside. I'm getting ready to take them off and put epoxy behind them. But it uh, came out well. Happy with this. See the two backing plates, one over here and one over here. I'm going to take them off and put some epoxy behind them so they'll be forever. Well, these have been in the closet for a long time, but it's time to put them back. Um, this is the front one, and this is a stainless plate I drilled to replace the black iron, black steel plate they had originally. And these, I was a little concerned they wouldn't be long enough because the CUSA panel is, it's a thicker transom than it used to be, but they're plenty long enough. So I just need to clean them a little bit and put some uh, sealer on them and put them in there. So this install is way better than original. Originally the, the um, wedge shape 
area between the two holes was filled with a block of wood and glassed over. And of course the wood rotted away. And the backing plate was steel and it rotted away and there wasn't much left when I got it. But now the wedge shape is solid glass and the backing plate is 316 stainless so this should last a long time. So yesterday I sprayed the bottom of the top with the um, final color and this morning my neighbor Paul came over and we put the top back up on top of the t-top and I got it all straight where it needed to be where it was when I marked the holes and put a couple clamps on it and then started drilling and tapping um, screws and it really went in spite of the fact that there's almost 40 of them it went pretty well and didn't take very long um, the aluminum is really soft so it drills easy and it taps pretty easy and um, just uh, looks, looks super super happy right now and the t-top top is on it's uh, dry I don't have any adhesive yet which I probably will add to keep it from flapping or vibrating but, and I'm super happy with it but I have a question for the group I have 316 stainless steel screws and I have soft aluminum frame and although this boat will not live in a saltwater environment it lives here in Baton Rouge we have uh, Exxon and Dow Chemical and Rubicon we have good air um, it will see salt water and I'm not sure how to deal with this. Do I put Loctite? Do I coat them with epoxy and screw them in? Do I put some sort of a sealant goop? I'm not sure what to do with all these bolts to keep them from one vibrating out and two to keep them from welding themselves in permanently. So final sanding on the front part of the deck for the fifth time and it's taped and I'm getting ready to roll the texture down for the front and then tomorrow I'll clean the back half and we'll put texture on the back half. So this is what I'm using for Nosgit. Um, this is epoxy paint, it's macro epoxy 646 and I've used it lots of times so I'm comfortable with it. I know it's going to get hard enough to sand and I know it's going to stick and it's just um, it's got a track record for me so it's a uh, it's 50 50 I hate pouring out of a gallon can so I use these little scooper cups and then just throw them away so I've got an equal amount of the smelly part the white smelly part and the worst smelly part the hardener the um, tan stuff put them together and mix them up um, if I was going to use this as a paint I might put a little thinner in it but I'm not I, I want the opposite I want it to be thick and I stir it up and then I put also a cup of polyfiber in there um, and that's to make it thick and tacky and my goal is when I roll it with the roller for the paint to stick to the roller and stand up and make little bitty mountain ranges and, and it, it works that's it works very well and actually as I'm doing this video I haven't sanded the tops off yet and it's almost impossible to needle on right now because it tops are just razor sharp so um, if you had like a work boat and you n know people are going to be on in boots and not bathing suits you maybe you wouldn't want to sand it you might want to make it as rough as you possibly could but uh, for us we're going to sand it down and it's a balancing act you know the less you sand it the more non-skid properties you have but also it's going to get dirtier easier because the dirt's going to get in the cracks and the more you sand it the easier to be to clean and easier it will be on bare feet but uh, you won't have quite as much of the non-skid properties so you know to each his own but this is the way I'm doing mine so this first batch I just dumped some out and I'm spreading it with the roller um, later on I switched to using a plastic squeegee to spread it out I was getting uh, better results because the amount of evenness of the amount of material you have I mean the the better it's spread out the more even the texture is going to be so if you have one area that's got a whole lot of uh, epoxy it's going to look different than the areas that just have a thin amount of epoxy so uh, I may do this time and then I realized it would have been easier and, and I got a plastic squeegee and started using that to squeeze it out 
but basically you just you want to spread it out as much as possible and uh, this um, epoxy kind of gets tacky kind of quickly and then you go over it with a roller with just barely the weight of the roller um, you're not trying to push down you're not trying to move material you just want to let the paint stick to the fluffy roller and it'll stand up on end and because it's so um, got so much thickener in it it'll stay standing up and that's all there is to it We had a pretty good little rainstorm last night, which is good because it will have washed all the loose stuff out the trees. So this morning, after I clean out the mess that'll be inside the boat and uh, let it dry, it should stay fairly clean so I can put the non-skid on the back half. And I just finished the non-skid on the back half of the boat. So thank goodness I'm finished fairing and smoothing out this deck. This is it. I still have to sand the non kit because right now it's too aggressive, but that's not so hard. So it's about three days later. I wanted it to cure really well before I sanded it. It gets really hard and brittle. And so I am kneeling on parts that I have already sanded because you really can't kneel on the parts you haven't sanded yet. And since really you just sanding the, the tips off the mountains, um, you're not trying to remove it all. It sands really quick. You can. You can tell how fast I'm I'm going here and this is regular speed it's not speeded up or slowed down or anything and you can tell more by feel than you can by looking at it at least I can I don't see so great so I rely on feel to see what needs more and what needs is good so um, did the whole boat in like 35 minutes it didn't take long because like I say you're not removing all this stuff you're just knocking the, the sharpies off the top of the hills and I am sanding the non skid down so this I don't know how well this is going to show this is sanded maybe a tad too much actually this is unsanded the points are sharp as I'll get out you see the points over here just real sharp you can't even kneel on them I'm kneeling on carpet but I'm knocking the points off and then it'll be uh, painted and then it'll be pretty like this part up here less all the tree chunk. And another question for the group. I have the original handrail and it is in mint condition. Do I put it back or not? Um, different people have different ideas. This is the old picture. I had my son-in-law held it up so we could see it from the side and I, I can't find that video. But hopefully uh, you can get an idea what it will look like and give me your thoughts. Thanks for watching and thanks for replying.